no child should leave psychotherapy worse off than when they started. However, some unconventional mental health interventions can cause severe emotional and physical injury, and these treatments aren't always easy for parents or professionals to identify. A new report argues that the first line of defense against these damaging interventions is the ability to clearly recognize their potential for harm. One issue making identification difficult is a lack of peer-reviewed publications explaining the details of such treatments. This information can often be found only on private websites or within self-published materials. But the work proposes a method that can readily flag a treatment as dangerous, even when well-designed outcomes research isn't available. The method relies on criteria derived from the Adverse Childhood Experiences Questionnaire and the Fourth National Incident Study of Child Abuse and Neglect, originally created to identify abusive behavior on the part of parents or direct caregivers. The criteria that were chosen can be readily transferred to the setting of psychotherapy. In this case, they would be evaluated within the context of a therapist's behavior. Comparing a given approach against each criterion can help answer the question, is this a potentially harmful treatment? The list covers a wide variety of emotional and physical aspects of abuse, ranging from inadequate nurturance and affection to bodily assault. Interventions generating positive responses to the criteria should be further examined for their ability to cause injury. For example, holding or attachment therapy, a technique that continues to be used throughout the world despite frequent reports of adverse events, receives clear positive answers for each criterion, and would thus be categorized as a potentially harmful treatment. Aversive conditioning using electric shock, festalter therapy, and conversion therapy would also be classified as potentially harmful using the proposed criteria. Many of these treatments have become so familiar over the years that they've begun to seem acceptable to some mental health professionals. By creating a simple checklist that can clearly flag potentially dangerous interventions, Parents and therapists alike can make better informed treatment decisions that may help protect children and adolescents from harm.